Hello everyone. This presentation will be about febrile seizures. The presentation is made by the Indian Academy of Pediatricians, available online. These presentations were made in 2015. I will be using these as a reference and will also tell about some latest updates as and where it is applicable. So coming to the definition of febrile seizures, there are certain key terms in this which we should know. Firstly, namely that it occurs between the age of 6 months to 60 months. So I am repeating that 6 months to 60 months. The temperature should be 38 degrees centigrade or higher and it is not the result of a CNS infection or metabolic imbalance in a neurologically normal child. So I repeat the definition 6 months to 60 months temperature of 38 degrees centigrade or more not as a result of CNS infection or metabolic imbalance in a neurologically normal child. Okay, I'll just close that. Okay. So coming to the incidence, it is reported to be about 2 to 5 percent of children less than 5 years of age and its maximum incidence is noted in 18 to 24 months. We have a certain terminology called simple and complex febrile seizures, majority of which are of simple type. Uh, I'll come to that in a bit. Coming to the cause, it is basically because of a change in the thermoregulatory center. The thermoregulatory centers are underdeveloped in children and it usually takes up to 5 years to develop. As we all know, maximum neurological development occurs up to 1 year of age, but it is completed only at 5 years of age. So as a result of which, that is very, very, very important. Okay, uh, coming to the etiology, it is often noted to be because of a genetic predisposition and the risk is 50% more if a parent has had febrile seizures. So the, basically we have to note all the causes of fever. Any fever can precipitate a, a febrile seizures in such a child. Common causes of fever include otitis media, post DPT immunization, post routine vaccination, upper respiratory tract infections. Those slide mentions measles. Measles is a bit less these days because of good immunization and good coverage of the immunization schedule. So uh, coming to the types of febrile seizures, like I was mentioning, we have two types, simple, which is also called as typical. So I'll just write that there. Okay. Okay. And complex, which is called as atypical. Okay. So that is that. Uh, coming to simple febrile seizures, uh, basically it is of generalized tonic-clonic type. It lasts for a maximum of 15 minutes, does not recur within 24 hours. That is, it is single episode lasting for less than 15 minutes as per the old protocol, but the newest update says less than 5 as the latest update and does not have any neurological sequel. Uh, complex febrile seizures is prolonged, so previously it was 15, now it is 5, so that change is there. It is focal, which means it is not generalized, it is confined. It is often multiple episode, which can also result as uh, complex or atypical febrile seizure. And a febrile status epilepticus is a febrile seizure lasting more than 30 minutes. As per old definition, that was subsequently cut down to 5 minutes. And now any active seizure comes as febrile status. So that is about febrile status epilepticus. Um, coming to the risk factors, uh, major risk factors are of course are age less than one year, duration of fever less than 24 hours and fever in the range of 38 to 39 degrees centigrade. And the minor risk factors include uh, fam significant family history. It's more commonly seen in male children in a ratio of 1 is to 3 with associated electrolyte imbalances. Recurrence risk, of course, 12% um, do have it despite no risk factor and as the number of risk factors increases, the risk of recurrence is also accordingly more. So, uh, a common question what parents will ask is whether if their child has had febrile seizures one episode is that child likely to get febrile seizures once more? Is a common question because if it has happened once, they will want to know whether it has happened again and if so, whether it requires any prophylaxis. 
So certain risk factors for these occurrence include focal complex febrile seizures. So a focal type does tend to have an epilepsy later on in childhood and even in early adolescence and early adulthood as well. A significant family history is also a significant risk factor. Uh, febrile seizures less than one hour within the onset of fever is another risk factor. Any type of atypical febrile seizures is a risk factor and recurrent febrile seizures more than two, three, four times subsequently is also a risk factor. Like I mentioned, the number of episodes of febrile seizures does increase the risk. So we have um, certain criteria to fulfill a hospital admission. Uh, first episode generally does not require a child less than 18 months. Uh, just requires parental education. Uh, admission is not required as long as the child is stable, vitals are stable, taking feeds well, no other specific complaints. If the child is less than 18 months, then um, lumbar puncture should be considered. We'll come to that in a little bit. Uh, admission, it's better to admit the child until the fever subsides. Identify the source of the fever. If uh, infection is there, treat it with the requisite antibiotics and... Um, Accordingly, keep the child until 24 hours of afebrile period is maintained, as most hospitals do. And if it is a recurrent febrile seizures, then again, parental education is the most important uh, factor. Uh, if the child is not stable, not able to take feeds adequately, uh, for supportive management, admission is advised. Uh, similarly, any atypical febrile seizure at any age, irrespective, does require... Uh, admission because of a chance of various electrolyte imbalances and other conditions. So the evaluation of the child is pretty much along the line of how we would evaluate a fever. Uh, of course, as any case, any history, clinical history to be taken in detail. Any recent antibiotics to be noted, uh, I'll come to, that is important very specifically in this point because of a possibility of LP. I will come to that when we speak about LP. So recent antibiotic therapy is very important and it is important to rule out meningitis and encephalitis at the history level and examination as well. So coming to the investigations uh, for a simple febrile seizures, blood investigations namely a complete blood count is a must along with serum electrolytes, a urine routine. Special investigations include calcium, phosphorus, magnesium as well. Uh, it is important to check a blood glucose at admission because hypoglycemia can precipitate seizures as well. It should not be missed. It should not be thought as a seizure due to other disorders. Uh, blood glucose level is always to be measured. Apart from that, EEG and neuroimaging are routine investigations. A lot of debate is there about lumbar puncture. And this is the portion where I would like to give a bit of focus. Uh, some institutes and some practitioners do say the first episode does require it. However, for the first episode in a neurologically healthy child, it can be avoided and it should not be routinely performed unless specifically indicated. So coming to the indications for a routine lumbar puncture, any infant between 6 months to 12 months of age who came with a seizure with fever incompletely immunized. When I say incompletely immunized, specifically towards the strep pneumonia as well as the hip immunizations. If these two are missed out, lumbar puncture is a must. Any child who presents with seizure actively and fever with meningeal signs, then it is a must. I mentioned about antibiotic history. Any child who has taken antibiotics incompletely, I am repeating this incompletely. It is a must because even a single dose of antibiotics can mask the signs and symptoms of meningitis. So I will just review this once more. The indications for an LP are any infant between 6 months to 12 months of age, incompletely immunized, with active seizure, with meningeal signs, having received antibiotics, even a single dose can mask a uh, meningitis. Now coming to the evaluation of a complex febrile seizure, the routine blood investigations remain the same, EEG is to be done, MRI is to be done and LP is done routinely for a atypical febrile seizures.
Okay. Okay. Uh, coming to the treatment, the drug of choice is uh, benzodiazepines, of course, for an acute management. As management of any status, first line is uh, midazolam. As home therapy, it is maintained. Of course, it can be done with uh, buccal spray. Rectal diazepam can also be given. In a hospital-based first line, of course, midazolam. Second line drugs as management of status epilepticus, you can give uh, phenytoin, phosphenytoin, subsequently step up to uh, sodium valproate, you can step up to phenobarbitone if necessary before going in for infusions for an active uh, status epilepticus. Uh, controversial points, of course, uh, role of antipyretics. It does not prevent recurrences, it only gives comfort to the child. But uh, general belief is that if you reduce the fever, then it reduces the seizures as well. Uh, the best antipyretic, of course, is paracetamol. Um, other medications, of course, ibuprofen, mephenamic acid can be given if no contraindication. But paracetamol, when it works well, why go for something else? Uh, coming to prophylaxis, you do have continuous and intermittent prophylaxis. Uh, continuous prophylaxis has certain indications. What is more commonly done is intermittent. It is given if the history of seizures was requiring 15 minutes or if the seizures was not self-limiting. Apart from that, if a history of frequent febrile seizures in a short duration. When I say intermittent, I mean that the prophylaxis is given when the child is having fever for 3 days. The drug of choice is of course freesium. Freesium is nothing but clobazem. It is sold in the trade name of freesium. Uh, you can keep a dosage of 1 mg per kg per day, 0.75 to 1 mg, better to give as 1 mg per kg per day. And it is available as both 5 mg as well as 10 mg tablets. So it's to be uh, tailored and suited out accordingly. Uh, when I say continuous prophylaxis, it's basically because the child is having more than 6 episodes per year in spite of intermittent prophylaxis or if the child came in febrile status. So for these continuous prophylaxis, it's preferred to give phenobarbitone or sodium valproate. Uh, dosage of valproate is 20 mg per kg per day. Sorry. So the dosage of valproate is 20 mg per kg per day. And uh, continuous prophylaxis is given for two years and then response is seen and then decided whether to be tapered or not. Uh, to just briefly summarize and conclude, uh, these are frequent disorders of infancy and early childhood. It requires good amount of assurance, might require pharmacotherapy in the form of either intermittent or continuous prophylaxis. And parental education is something which is to be stressed upon, parental confidence is to be taken. It is definitely manageable, nothing to worry. I thank IAP for this uh, presentation and I thank all of you for your patient listening. Thank you.